let's let's start now so yesterday right we were continuing with our discussion all the way and uh, we saw how this might be helpful for us to learn uh, some of the operators what we saw in the last session okay and uh, what we saw in the operators we saw how many kinds of different uh, operators are there in python like arithmetic operators bitwise operators then we had assignment operators comparison operators which would be giving you the boolean value uh, mostly used in your uh, uh, decision making like if else statements and then there is a boolean operator where we had and or are not okay same like uh, we had a logical operators in python and in, in javascript and also identity and a membership operator is or is not or not in or in so th that kind of a membership relationship we saw here membership operator uh, like the word or the element found within a list or not and if it is not in then it will return true or false okay they are all uh, boolean in nature okay and so is the case with the identity operator this is also a boolean where a is b or a is not in b again that will be <coughs> giving you true or false all right with that being learned yesterday uh, let's jump on to a new topic today uh, what is called as built-in types okay data types <clears throat> now as the word itself suggests uh, there are a majorly in any programming language right we can divide the data types or uh, and the data structures very similar um, into two broad categories one is a simple uh, data types and uh, another is called a complex or a compound data types simple are are kind of also named as scalar we'll come to that and in python similarly there are two major categories one is scalar uh, data types and another is called compound data types and in the scalar or simple data types there is int float complex there is bool string and none type okay all these are kind of a, um, a six of them and they can be put broadly into four categories int float and uh, complex can be put into numeric okay these are uh, related to the numbers and bool is is a boolean data type string is related to the text okay what we call it as a uh, text and uh, uh, strings that is what the string data type is and then there is a none type here in python like in in javascript we learned about null right null is also a data type in javascript so is called as undefined undefined is also a data type in javascript but here there is nothing called as undefined but there is a similar for null in python which we call it as none type okay none type is nothing but who its value would be none n capital okay n capital n o n e so this is similar to null or not having a value or unknown value now <clears throat> let's go ahead and see uh, what are these scalar data types scalar data types are most basic types that holds only a single atomic value which means it, uh, it contains at any given point in time it contains only one value like for example uh, let's say where name is equal to uh, or number let's say number num is equal to uh, let's say 23 okay now at at this given time the num variable can only contain one value okay which is of a number which is a integer data type okay but at the same time uh, you cannot have uh, 23 and 20, uh, 24, 23 or 22 just storing within the num value. That is not possible because num can only store a single number, okay, which is of int data type, okay. That is what it means. The scalar data types can hold at any given point in time only a single atomic value in that variable, okay. So, which is nothing but a, a address location or a pointer in Python. Now, scalar type is something that has a finite set of possible values, which means you can uh, it, it, it can have a very uh, determined or a, a a finite value it can store. It cannot store some kind of an infinite value with large number of data. No, it cannot. It, there is a fi finite set 
there is a finite set of possible values that it can hold and th that is where you can able to operate equal to greater than or less than on these uh, scalar uh, data types we'll come to this uh, in a while but now majorly in python the the simple or a scalar data types can be grouped into four major categories which are six in number which we saw here and the numeric values can contain integer floating point or complex okay these are the uh, data types that three data types that can represent a numeric value okay and <clears throat> we will see we'll come to that in a while with an example we'll see what are those and everything and the next is a boolean boolean is as the name itself suggests it can at a, any given point in time it can only hold one value that is either true or false and just observe that true the t is capital here in boolean in in javascript everything was small letters right but here in python t is capital f is capital that is one key difference you need to make a note of and uh there is also a data type called none type which is nothing but it will hold only one value called null none which is very similar to null okay it is as if like it is null and it holds none and string string is uh, representing the character or the text characters is it can represent a single character it can be an alpha numeric character or special characters as well you can put that into a string okay any character can be uh, put and assigned a string data type like for example uh, let's say num is equal to if i put it in single quotes this will become a num will become a string now instead of number if i remove or single quotes or double quotes or triple quotes either of them is fine but if i remove that num will now become an integer data type okay so that is uh, which in particularly it will be an integer data type numeric which is integer data type so what it means is a string can have a characters or a text that is scalar in nature can hold a single value now <clears throat> before we uh, jump into details let's understand an important concept in a data type called as mutable and immutable okay what is meant by mutable and immutable at this at a high level just try to understand that mutable data types are those whose values can be modified or altered that is what mutable data type is whereas immutable data types are those whose values cannot be modified or altered that is called immutable data types so as you can observe that all scalar types have immutable in nature they are cannot be modified okay they are immutable in nature you even though that value can be uh, altered but you cannot go ahead and modify the part of the value that cannot be done it's 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 immutable you know, suppose num is equal to 24 later you can go ahead and reassign a value 55 that is fine that is reassigning the value but it is not mutable you, are, you 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 don't go ahead and modify uh, that data type okay that is the reason this is called immutable data type some examples here int is x is equal to 96 this is an integer integer and float is 3.14 which is of a decimal in nature complex will be in the part of a plus b i like complex numbers we'll see that and boolean which will contain true or false string can be uh, written in single quotes or double quotes or triple quotes we'll see what is this triple quote different from double quotes and single quotes and the none type just a value none and there is also another set of data uh, so far any questions guys so far in the scalar types as we saw no sir okay <clears throat> now let's observe the another set of data types which we call it as a compound we also can name it as a data structures in in a, in a particular sense and they are called list tuples dictionaries sets okay these are the four again there is also a range there is also a frozen set uh, in, in in a set which is a immutable uh, uh, data type 
and we will we'll come to that in a while but now understand that three these are the four major uh, uh, compound data structures in uh, or data types in python list list will always be represented as a square brackets okay this is an open square bracket and a square bracket it's it's similar kind of an array okay you can visualize and lists are ordered sequence of objects order is very important here everything is ordered okay ordered is numbered or indexed okay and then it is mutable it is a mutable you can go ahead and modify these values okay and then tuple is again an ordered sequence of objects and represented but it's immutable you cannot modify it and these are represented by parentheses open and close parentheses and they contain multiple values and if you observe these values can any data type in itself this is a string this is a integer here this is a string again and here it is a, an a integer it is a string it is a decimal or a floating point number again it contains multiple values which are which in turn are of different data types okay so these two lists and tuple are always ordered sequence of objects they are order is very important for them which means they are indexed they are ordered whereas dictionaries and sets these both are mutable they can be modified and if you observe unordered mapping so dictionary is very similar to objects in javascript where you have a key and a value key value pairing always in a key value pairing here key is represented is always string and it is represented in double quotes or single quotes and value can be anything value can be an integer number decimal or whatever that is or that can in itself be a dictionary as well okay now this is called as dictionary which is an unordered key value mapping it is mutable in nature and the next is a set set is also mutable and it is also represented by curly brackets but it is not a key value pairing okay it is never a key value pairing it is an unordered collection of unique values you cannot have a duplicate here like arsenal barcelona and psg again you cannot go ahead and add barcelona here you can't do it so everything what it contains is a unique value it is a unique set always unique is very important keyword while defining a set it is an unordered collection of unique sets so just to observe here whenever a flower bracket is used it is it it represents unordered okay always unordered in case of dictionary it is unordered in case of set it is also unordered okay and both are mutable all right <clears throat> now with that uh, being in the background let's get started with the very first which is called as numbers <clears throat> so as you know numbers what are these numbers numbers are built in scalar types which can be integers floating point and complex now let's see this and what does this integer represents integer represents a whole number which can be a positive negative or zero let's take this example number one is equal to 24 number two is equal to zero number three is equal to minus 300 or 295 and if i go ahead and print num1 num2 num3 so what you can observe here is all these represents a uh, integers so it can be a positive number it can be a zero that is also fine and it can also be a negative number all these are called as integers and they are uh, de defined by giving a value to that uh, variable so how do you create an integer even uh, the the an integer can be created using a int constructor okay what it means is suppose there is a number four i want to create and int the value is 2022 
So what you can observe here, and let's see, type of num4. So what I'm doing, I am creating a variable using the int constructor. Int is a built-in constructor that is used to create a integer. So now, whenever I, I give int 2022 and assign it to num4, the num4 will have a value called 2022. If you see what the type of this num, it will be an integer. And here, if I go ahead and uh, type 2023 dot something, even though this is a decimal number, but this int constructor will only pick the digits prior to the decimal only the integer part of this number will be picked and assigned to the num4 if you observe let's say uh, print num4 so what it is doing so now print num4 num4 is just taking up the integer part of it and then that is assigned. So num4, whenever I'm printing, it is printing 2023 and not the decimal part of it. And also what it is doing, it is assigning a data type of integer to the variable. Okay, that is the use of the int constructor method. This is a built-in int constructor method. There is Again, there is also a float and there is a complex. Even all these uh, are called the constructor methods in uh, Python. Let's take one by one. And now, <clears throat> so integers in includes negative whole numbers. Okay, that is what we saw. It can be a negative number. Zero is also integer as well. So the type of zero, if you see the type of the letters, uh, word, uh, I mean, numbers zero is also an integer. And int constructor method is used to create an integer variable. We saw this as well. And now uh, let's observe that. Let, let's let's take one example here. Okay. Uh, let's take one example of uh, uh, let's say JavaScript. I'm just uh, trying to give you a comparison, and that's where you can learn both the things parallelly. Suppose uh, number one is equal to. So now, if you observe what is happening here, all the numbers are not specified. It is somewhere constructed into 10 to the power of 29. Okay, 1.23 something into 10 to the power 29. So how many are there? Decimal places 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, then there is a power of something. So, but here in Python, if you observe, let's say uh, I'll, I'll give a number like maybe uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 into uh, power of something. into uh, let's so if you observe in python there is no limit you can go ahead and do anything that you want and it can be representing all the values. But in JavaScript, it is not the case. At some point in time, after it exceeds certain 15 or 16 uh, decimal places, it will automatically convert into the e to the power or 10 to the power of 29. 10 to the power of 29. That is what you read it as. But in Python, that is not the case. Why is that? Because what? Because of the precision 
so we will we, we'll come to that what it is now in in python or any in in c or in javascript pro programming language which are of the fixed precision types which means they usually overflow at some point somewhere between 2 to the power 31 or 2 to the power 61 depending on the type of your system whether it is a 32 bit or 62 or 64 bit machine it will be overflown which means it will be converted into something but in python the integers are variable precision okay so you can do all the computation without overflow uh, that is the reason here 2 to the power 1999 you can able to represent a very long integer number as well but in 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 javascript there is a, another data type we saw that begin right where we used to have uh, a number followed by n okay a number followed by n would be representing a begin okay now in python that is not the case you can able to give an integer uh, any long number okay and there is another point here what it means is whenever you do some computation in 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 python like for example uh, let's say uh, number 5 is equal to uh, 22 number 6 is equal to 7 which is basically i'm trying to do what uh, uh, pi value number 7 is equal to num5 divided by num6 so now if you observe print num7 so what is happening even though the num5 is an integer num2 is also an integer but num7 when we do a division operator is used this is a division arith arithmetic operator right so the whenever a division arithmetic operator used and the resultant is generating a floating point number then the number that is assigned the variable that is assigned would be of a floating point number it this is what we call it as up casting which means you are casting an integer value into a data type of floating it is promoted it is it is upcasted to a floating point number. Again, you can pick only the integer part of it by using uh, int uh, again int uh, constructor method. That is also fine. You can do that, or you can use the double flow uh, division where you can uh, where you can pick only the what you can only pick the integer part of it that also you can do because of this python 3 right uh, in python 3 this double flow uh, i mean a floor operator has been this is a floor division we call this as a floor division right so the floor division will help you to pick only the integer part of it but what is the point i am trying to bring across here whenever the two integers or more than uh, two integers are involved in some arithmetic or any operation when the resultant is a, a non-integer value which is a floating point number then both integers which are used in the computation will be upscaled the resultant will be upcasted to the floating point number okay if the result is a decimal number that is what you can uh, observe here as well the same 22 by 7 will give you a decimal or a floating point number so uh, python integers by default the division operation will upcast to a floating point type now with that being said what is this floating point type now floating point is nothing but a decimal number whenever you use the fraction the fractions are representing the decimal numbers so what is meant by fractions like for example, if you have uh, uh, 12 by 3, so what is the resultant? It will be a fraction. Whenever the division operates, it is a fraction or a decimal place. And if it is like 11, it will be converted again to a floating point number. All right. Now, what you observe here is the floating point numbers are used to represent non-integer fractional numbers so it is not an integer and also it is a fraction so fraction is nothing but which will be resulting into a decimal number where you have a dot notation okay if you observe this is a 
dot notation dot syntax dot notation so this will be the first part is called the integer part the second part is called a decimal part okay now what is the floating point number floating point number can also be positive or negative okay now for example if i go ahead and say uh, minus uh, 1 2 3 bar 2 so what this will be this will be a negative floating point number which is minus 11.5 this is still a decimal this is still a floating point number but it is negative that's it and floating point number can be defined either in a standard decimal notation or exponential notation now let's let's see this uh, let's observe one part here uh, let's say i want to represent uh, one zero point zero 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 uh, eight or six seventy six let's say and now what is this if you observe this is converted into an exponential notation what is meant by exponential notation it is e it is e so what it means is seven point how do you read this it is read as 7.6 into or 7.6 times 10 to the power of minus 7 or 7.6 into 10 to the power minus 7 that is how you read it as which means this is same as 7.6 into 10 to the power of minus 7 this what you see here 7.6 into 10 to the power power exponentiation minus 7 this and this means same this is how you represent that into a exponential notation 7.6 into 10 to the power minus 6 and here it is taking multiple decimal places but that is fine into 10 to the power minus 7 which is approximated to the same value which is 7.6 all right now what is this one if you observe here the floating point number one is 0 0.0009 and floating point number two is 9 into 10 to the power minus 9 this is what the exponential notation of the same numbers these are both same either you can represent with a capital letter e or small letter e both are fine so in exponential notation right e and capital e small letter e or capital letter e both are same there is no difference and how do you read it it is times 10 to the power okay that is what it it is read as like uh, 9.8 into 10 to the power 7 that is what this number would be this is a exponential notation or a, this is a decimal notation this is a exponential notation there are two different notations with which you can represent a floating point number okay any any questions guys so far no, no, no. Okay, good. So now, uh, and also like you saw an integer constructor class, right? In the same way, there is also called as float. An integer can be explicitly converted into a float with a float constructor. So it is a two-way. How do you how do you see that? Suppose now <coughs> you have a, a deci one decimal number one, which is equal to what? Let's say uh 3.142 all right <clears throat> this is a decimal number now i want to convert this decimal number into an integer number how do i do that i can do that using int constructor correct if i go ahead and say int constructor and now what will happen if you see this will be converting the float number into a integer number this constructor now the same part if i want to convert this back into a float how do i do that like for example there is a number uh, 55 or for that matter 33 i want to convert that into a decimal number deci2 is equal to 33 uh, float of this number so what it will do this 
constructor float will convert this integer 33 into a decimal by putting dot zero zero or dot zero okay now if i go ahead and uh, print this deci2 variable this will be 33.00 this is what this float constructor has added so what is it doing it has converted the integer into a decimal or a floating point number so understood guys how this can be utilized float and constructor uh, float constructor and int constructor yeah. Yeah. all right <clears throat> now so there is a precision again uh, the, as we have observed in our uh, other example here right 7.6 into 10 to the power minus 7 it is converted into 7.599999 which is still approximated to six so that is the reason what there is an argument that is being uh, done here with a fixed precision format like for example uh, if i add 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 uh, this should be ideally this and this should be equal but it is returning false why is that returning false because behind the scene right this 0 0.1 is equal to 0 0.00000 all the way to one and the, so is the case with 0 0.2, which is all the way it is 1. If you sum it up, it will be approximately equal to 2.999999 something. Okay. That is the reason you are seeing this value 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is still not giving you the value of 0 0.3 okay so again if you go ahead i'll share this one and you can go ahead and see what the argument how it is done it is it is basically the point here is that it is not the behavior unique to the python but it is due to fixed precision format of a binary floating point storage okay that is how uh, behind the scene on your registers or the memory location this is how it is stored all right now let's uh, let's come back to what is known as complex numbers as you have seen a complex number is any number that can be put into the format a plus b i okay this is what you have seen a complex number this is a real part and this is an imaginary part and this is a iota i is called an iota okay it, this is what you see in your mathematics during school days okay that is how the complex numbers are represented the real part of the complex number this is an imaginary part of the complex number and i is called the iota which is represented uh, whenever this is used this will be a complex number defined now complex numbers are expressed in a plus bj here it is always j here we are not using i it is always j here okay ideally it would have been j but here in python we are using small letter j as a uh, representation for complex numbers okay a and b are called real numbers and j is an imaginary number which is called as iota okay and now uh, uh, the complex numbers are the numbers with real and imaginary parts that is fine and both the imaginary part and the real part you can go ahead and see and here if you see complex constructor method is there like the way we saw it as an int and float there is also a method called built-in constructor method called complex method returns a complex number when real and imaginary parts are provided like for example if i say complex 9 comma 6 where 9 and 9 is a real part and 6 will be part of the imaginary then it will return the value 9 plus 6 j okay so uh, uh and with the real and imaginary parts or it converts a string or a number into a complex number that is what you have a number here both are integers separated by comma you are converting that into a complex number all right and j uh suffix yeah there is a j suffix all right but here if you say uh complex number is equal to 3 plus 4j if i see if i run this and say uh type of complex num it will return complex okay it will obviously return um uh, complex what is this oh sorry i should write plus all right so it will return the type of this is a complex because how is it python identifying that it is identifying that with the 
real and imaginary parts wherever it j is appended then it becomes a complex number or you can go ahead and say uh, this number would be equal to i can go ahead and use complex constructor where i can pass 3 comma 4 3 comma 4 this is also fine i can go ahead and uh, uh, print complex number and the type the complex number is 3 plus 4j so the complex constructor has created a complex number for me and at the same time the type of this variable is complex all right that is what you need to understand in terms of complex numbers again complex numbers have got conjugates modulus and all that we'll, we'll see one by one so now <coughs> here uh, uh, let's say <coughs> there is let's go ahead and observe here now you have a complex number okay complex number dot now this everything is an object in uh, python right now this is a complex data type if i type dot and tab out there are certain properties associated with it one is called conjugate another is called imaginary and then it is called a real then if i go ahead and put a real then what this will return me this will return me the real part of this complex number which is three let's go ahead and see so this has returned me a three three point zero yeah another thing just observe here let's observe here okay I'll, I'll give one more uh, let's say let's say imaginary just observe here the real part is a decimal uh, which is a floating point and also the imaginary part is also a floating point so what it means is this is what it means the complex numbers are the numbers with the real and imaginary points which are floating point okay they are always put floating point they are not integers all right that is what that is the reason you see dot four here dot four here so real and imaginary parts are always floating point in complex numbers and also there is a, another uh, there is another property called as conjugate conjugate is nothing but a negation so when it will it will change the sign it will be 3.4 j all right now if i go ahead and see Mm. built in complex conjugate yeah 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 got it so now i need to pass a value here like the way we have done here if you observe i think this is a method the way the moment i put a method because earlier what we saw this and this are the attributes attributes are the properties of this uh, object type and whereas the conjugate is nothing but it is a method so whenever we use a method you need to have the parenthesis and here the no argument is being passed now if you observe here if you observe here the conjugate of any complex number will be the negation so it will change the plus to minus minus to plus and suppose um uh, if if i if i go ahead and create let's say complex uh, num2 okay complex num2 and then i'm going to use a complex constructor and this constructor i'm going to pass uh let's say 4 comma minus 5 and if you go ahead and see So the complex number 2 will be 4 minus 5j. This is still a complex number. And if I go ahead and use the conjugate, then the conjugate will change the sign of it. It will change 4 minus 5 to 4 plus 5j. That is the purpose of this conjugate. So conjugate of a, uh, if, if you see the exact statement, right? Conjugate of a complex number is another complex number which has the same real part and the origin as the original complex number and the same imaginary part, but the magnitude would be opposite sign. For the imaginary part, the 
magnitude of that will be minus sign or a negative or a opposite sign if it is plus it will be minus if it is minus it will be plus okay so now let's uh, let's go ahead and observe what is called as magnitude magnitude has a following formula so magnitude again it is a number it is a number distance from the origin in the complex plane so whenever we put a imaginary or a complex numbers onto a coordinates right this is what it will be the magnitude would be a numbers distance from the origin in the complex plane so how do you compute the magnitude the magnitude is that is a square root of complex uh, the real number to the power square plus imaginary number to the power square okay then that will be the comp, uh, magnitude so if i go at the simple um, the method for that is abs abs will be used to find the magnitude or the absolute value so if i go here and uh, let's say abs of this complex number this is nothing but magnitude or also called as absolute value okay it is called as magnitude or the absolute value of the complex number if i find this it will return what it will return the absolute value of this complex number okay which is 6.42 now for for our ease of understanding right let me uh, find the magnitude of this number complex num complex num is this one right what it will be it will be five how are we computing this it will be square root of what is the square root square root of this number is what e plus 4j this is the number complex number so 3 3 square so it will be 3 square plus 4 square so what is the square 4 square uh, 3 square 9 and 4 square is 16 9 plus 16 is 25 square root of 25 is 5 that is how you compute the absolute value and this can also be done in a built-in uh, method that we have that is abs simple abs method and you pass the number it will find the absolute or the magnitude of that complex number so did you understand guys yes okay good so now that will round up what we have in numbers okay so just to recapitulate numbers are of three types which is integers floating point and complex integers are the numbers that are positive negative and uh, zero those are the part of the whole numbers these are the whole numbers and it can be uh, int constructor method is used to create an integer data type or it can convert a uh, float into an int as well and then there is a floating point number these are the non integer fractional numbers it can it, they are nothing but a decimal numbers it can be represented in two ways either by decimal notation or exponential notation exponential notation can be represented by capital e or small e all right and then there is a complex numbers these are the numbers which can be put in the format a plus bj a is a, re a real part and bj is an imaginary part where j is called a iota okay that is a imaginary number called iota and then there is a constructor method that we have for complex which is a complex method and uh, uh, you can create a complex number by passing an argument to it the numbers to it and that will create you a complex number and complex number can have a real part you can get an imaginary part by using these attributes and also you can convert a conjugate by using this conjugate method okay and also find the absolute value or the magnitude of a complex number by using an inbuilt python function or a method called abs abs you need to pass an argument called a complex number all right so this is what we have in uh, numbers all right any questions guys so far in numbers also right. so uh, oh, another thing you need to remember in terms of numbers is numbers are immutable 
okay they cannot be modified that is important i'll come to that immutable and uh, uh, mutable part of it very soon but now just remember that all scalar types all scalar types are immutable in nature all right now let's go to the next which we call it as strings okay strings now i know they are representing the characters or text strings are immutable sequence of one or more characters put in a single quote double quote or triple quote okay well so that is how you define a string let me clear this off how do you clear this guys uh, just select them all control a and then uh, in capital letter press dd that's it if you press a d twice this will be erased and now let's go to this cell and say um, string one is equal to let's say i want to put that into single quotes is that okay so now what i'm trying to do i am creating a variable of a type called string okay string is what string is a sequence of characters a character can be anything it can be a number it can be a special character it can be a digit or anything even i can go ahead and say uh, i can put a dollar sign here i can put a nine here so this is still a string okay this is still a string and i can just go ahead and put the number within it now even this is a string because it is represented in single quotes okay or you can also go ahead and represent that into uh, double quotes as well like for example so this is also a right way to declare a variable okay in uh, in uh, python and even uh, you can go ahead and type it in triple single quotes as well this is also fine okay this is also a string now what i am doing i am putting that into a single quotes okay three single quotes i can use or i can also use three quotes as well like this three double quotes as well this is also fine string 2 is equal to i can go ahead and put that into a single case it is also fine i can put that in triple quotes that is absolutely fine if i go ahead and print string one comma string two it will say how are you i am fine that's it no worries all right so <clears throat> coming back to this strings are immutable sequence of one or more characters that can be put into a single quote double quote or triple quote triple quote can be a single quote of uh, three triple quotes or a double quote of three triple quotes that is also fine like in this say you have three double quotes with three here single quotes with three okay that is also fine and it is a right way to uh, start a string data type and there is no character data type in python a character is a single length so in 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 in, in c right there is also a data type called character char but here there is nothing like that it is just represented by single quotes double quotes or triple quotes and <clears throat> if you observe textual data in python is handled with str object or strings like for example if you if you uh, str is how you have it in in uh, constructor method right int float and complex this here it is str okay which is string now <clears throat> let's let's take this example we have seen uh, th there is a variable name called c name which is defined assigned a value string within defined under a single quotes that is fine and then there is a name a string that is uh, defined with the double quotes you can do that it is absolutely fine but in triple quotes right whenever i do not assign a variable name to it now this will become a comment 
in python that is a important observation if a variable if you put some text into triple quotes and do not assign it to any variable or an identifier then this will become a comment okay nothing will happen here Uh, just a second i'll restart here because in the memory that will be storing the value okay uh, i'll restart and clear the outputs it is still running if you observe here right if it is in uh, dark black then th it is still running like, just observe that if i say clear here if you observe it is in dark right this means it is still in progress so the moment it becomes uh, transparent then it is executed now let's let's execute that so what it means is now this is having no effect on the python code okay because this is treated as a comment now this is a comment so this is only works for the triple quotes not for the double quotes or anything all right <coughs> now uh, so uh, it can be treated with multiple co quotes and spanning strings over multiple quotes can be done using triple quotes as well and it can be done with a long code that is fine uh, double quotes or single quotes the multiple quote comment like we are observing here if you want to put a line in multiple quotes you can do it using triple quotes so what it means is very uh, another important uh, catch here let's say if you want to create a string let's say uh, i want to see uh, so i have a poem and poem la uh, spans across multiple lines let me say uh, let's say i'm copying twinkle twinkle little star okay let's say lyrics what is the lyrics here yeah let's let's take that so i'm just uh, giving you one example uh, let's say this is a uh, poem all right now i want to define a poem and this is all a string so if i had to put it in the same format like this i need to use triple quotes whenever my string spans multiple lines then the best way to use it is in a triple quotes. You can't use a double quote. You need to use a triple quote. So if I execute a print poem, then what it will have poem or maybe rhyme is the better word. So if I print it here, it will print the same way, like the same white spaces, the same new lines, etc., etc., whatever is defined in this string it will be printed out okay that is again another use of triple quotes so triple quotes whenever you have a string that spans over multiple lines you need to use triple quotes single quotes or double quotes that is also absolutely fine so that is what we have demonstrated here and if you have if no variable is assigned to it then it will be a multi-line comment okay that is also fine now uh oh it's a 954 now very quickly i'll go ahead and see some of the built-in uh, methods okay so like like the way we saw in javascript right there are many string methods like uh, the length or index or uh, um, uh, again we saw uh, two lower two upper and all that in the same way there are also python built-in string methods one of them is called as length length is a built-in method len which is nothing but it will return the length of the string now academy is equal to skills app now i want to see the length of this uh, string it will be len len method is used and you pass that value it will return me the string eight which is one two three four five six seven eight eight characters in this string okay that is where length the length of the string can be fetched using the string method called len in in javascript it is length len gth right and then uh, uh to uppercase if you want to convert the string uh, yeah yes yeah, sir yeah yeah so if you want to convert the string into an uppercase you use the method called upper okay and uh, follow the string 
a variable or a string name even you can go ahead and i mean this can also be done this way like for example i have a string called for exam and then i want to add convert this into upper so i can go ahead and say upp er this is also fine it will return me all the characters into uppercase or i can go ahead and store that into a certain variable like the way i have done here assign a value to it and then converting that variable into uppercase that will return me everything into an uppercase and capitalized capitalized is something uh let's say i have how are you let's say this is defined in dot c a capitalized so what this will do this will convert the string where every uh, word will be uh, letter will be in capital okay so the very first what you see will be in capital lest all will be in small letter okay this is what capitalize will do like for example if you see this one and if i go ahead and use the capitalize now what will happen this w will be capital rest all will be small okay w will be capital and rest all will be in small so that is what capitalize will do and another thing is uh let's say um, you and even uh here you have let's say exam dot if i go ahead and say lower this will be converting the string into the entire lower cases so everything will be converted into lower case that is what we have seen this upper capitalize and also lower and how do you concatenate the string it's the same way that we do in uh, javascript where you can use the uh, arithmetic operator plus like for example uh let's say exam plus let's say lower so what this will do this will concatenate all these strings this string plus this string plus this string and it will return me the concatenated string which is one single string so plus sign is used to concatenate the string okay nothing uh, special in it it is the same thing that we do for uh, 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 string concatenation which is using the plus sign and uh, and also multiplication multiplication will obviously repeat it like for example uh, let's say ilzam uh, if you want to multiply it into five times or four times you can just do this so it will repeat those many times if i give space is here it will repeat those many times okay so multiplication will repeat the string so many times okay that is about multiplication operator and then there is a indexing of an operator so index is like the way uh, as you know that uh, strings are ordered sequence of characters so there is a index associated with it like for example now uh, if if you observe skills am and uh, uh, let let me assign that to academy is equal to skills am and if i want to fetch the very first character s then the index of s is 0 so i can go because it starts from 0 1 2 3 so on up to 7 and if i fetch that this will return me at the zeroth index what character is there it will return me that character so this is called indexing so you can fetch that individual value okay makes sense guys Yes, there are uh, there are again lot of things like if you observe uh, uh, in 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 uh, in uh, strings there are many more methods and character um, uh, many more properties associated with string methods like count it will count and again uh, ends with you can check what it ends with whether it ends with y or z. and return me true or false is alpha whether it is alphabet is is alpha numeric whether the string is an alpha numeric so all that you can go ahead and check that using lot of built in string methods and properties uh, or attributes
okay all right so with that being said let's conclude that it's already 10 4 we have done uh numbers and strings tomorrow we'll go jump start into bo boolean and uh, none and then there is a very important and very particular to python which is list tuples dictionaries and sets we'll see that tomorrow okay all right so all right guys thank you and uh, see you tomorrow at uh, the same time and uh, let's conclude this year thank you guys you guys have a good night